Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a little Sunday reset with me and I'm going to start planning for April and I'm going to take you guys along with me to share all the different ways I do it and share all kinds of fun updates with you as well. If you're new here, my name is Lauren Nicholson and I love to do all things homemaking and cooking, cleaning, decorating, and DIYs and I would love it if you would join my channel. It is totally free and lots of fun and if you're returning, it is so great to see you. Okay, let's get into this wonderful Sunday. To get started on this beautiful Sunday morning, I wanted to open this month's MD Hair box. This is now going into my third month of using MD Hair, and I've shared this on my channel before. They are the world's first medical grade hair regrowth treatment customized to exact cause and type of hair loss. I love that each kit is formulated with FDA approved medical and grade ingredients and botanical ingredients. It smells delicious, and they are also committed to a net positive impact on the planet. So they're products are cruelty, sulfite, and paraben free. Get started, you'll want to head over to their website and take their scalp quiz. This is pretty amazing because their AI technology can actually analyze your scalp and customize the exact treatment that is perfect for your hair. So if you are, let's say, 30 years old postpartum and you are having sensitive scalp, you may have a completely different program than someone like me who is just having hair loss that is probably um, has a lot to do with age and probably stress and things like that. So each kit is very specific. I use their shampoo and conditioner that are customized for my hair. I love their collagen. I like to add it to my coffee. It's got a great flavor, really easy to use. And then I also take their daily vitamins, which I do first thing when I wake up. This for me has been a great thing to add to my routine every single day. I take the vitamins and I usually will wash my hair with my MD hair products once or twice a week, just depending. Since I, MD hair is helping my hair grow from a healthy scalp all the way down to my roots. One of my favorite things to use is their serum. This is a really great way to um, help your hair grow. If you do have like a dry or sensitive scalp, your hair is gonna have a much harder time growing. So I like to use this as often as possible. It's not oily and it leaves my hair super happy. Since it's Sunday, I'm just going to put a little bit extra in here. I'm gonna throw my hair in a bun for the rest of the day and just let that delicious oil rest on my scalp. If you guys are interested in checking out MD Hair and adding it to your routine this April, you can use the link down below and use code Nicholson70 for your first month of customized product at 70% off. If you guys feel like you are experiencing any type of hair loss, I highly recommend adding MD hair to your routine for longer and more beautiful, healthy locks. Now that I have all my hair done, I want to go ahead and use my red light therapy mask. I've been using this pretty religiously. Um, along with a couple other things I have put in a couple other videos, but this Sunday I just want to do a little red light therapy before I get started on my scheduling. So one of the things I like to do the last week of every month is get everything scheduled for the month ahead. I have a planner and then I also use this table. Um, it's just a Google sheet, but I like to actually block out how I'm going to spend my time. I think it's really important when you are building your schedule to make sure that you build significant blocks into your schedule to accomplish the goals that you have set for the month. So what I like to do is depending on kids sports, events, work related issues, anything like that. Um, I like to start the month changing those up. We are going from winter sports to spring sports. So this month is totally different than last month. So I want to go through here and kind of dial in where I can work out where I can work, when do I have to pick up kids, what sports do we have, what do the weekends look like. Um, that way I can start to then go to my monthly calendar and start to actually fill in kind of the high end or let's say like the um, larger scope or macro view of the month. So I will have spring break, Easter, um, all kinds of stuff coming up this particular month. So I will put that in there and then I will get more granular with the weeks. And what I like to do with my weeks is actually write down all the things I have already committed 
And then on the left hand side of each week, I actually write all the things that have to happen. So if a child is going into golf or soccer or whatever sport, um, I will then put on the left hand side all the things I need to do, getting their bag together, getting golf clubs together, shoes, um, uniforms, things like that. So it's not just putting in the calendar that I have these things to do. It's what are the necessary things to get those things done. So I do all of that and I will do it for the entire month. And then every single morning when I wake up, I will do my block scheduling for those days specifically. That way I don't get too granular, but I also know certain weeks, um, like the second week of this month, I am extremely busy. My little goal setting area was almost full of things to do. So I'm going to try to keep my schedule light that week and not over uh, book myself. The other thing I like to do is write all the ideas out that I have for um, the house, decorating, gardening, whatever, and then decide if I'm going to film those things or not. I also write out my goals for the month and really important events like my sister's birthday or any other birthday or a holiday. And then I will make sure that the blocks that I have created are actually congruent with the goals I set for that month. I hope this helps you guys. This has always helped me very high level kind of deal with each month. I don't spend a whole lot of time on it. I don't want to overthink it. Um, I just want to make sure that I have a good idea of what the week ahead is going to look like. Once I'm done with that, I am going to clean all my groceries and get to restocking. I always love to do a grocery order on Sunday, get everything clean and prepped, especially for the kids' lunches and the recipes that I have for dinner for the next coming couple nights. And I like to restock their snacks. As you guys know, we have four kids and lots of kids in our neighborhood. So by Sunday, they have pretty much cleaned this whole thing out. So I always like to go through, restock all of our snacks, all of our cereals, and things that they need for school and especially our water. So we're gonna do that and then we'll head into the laundry room and do the same.
to finish up all the laundry that we have left over from the weekend. Typically I try to get everything done Friday so that Sunday I've got a little bit to do, but I wanna get all that rotated and then I wanna also fill up just the things that I need for laundry. If you guys have already seen this laundry room redecorate with me, I painted everything and got it so nice in here. I just feel like it's a lot cozier. I can't wait to see what it looks like with the new floors that we should hopefully have in in the next week or two. But I'm gonna get all of this filled up and then I am going to take you into the kitchen and cook one of my favorite dinners of all time. <music> So for dinner tonight, we're gonna to be making homemade bolognese pasta, which is really simple, but insanely delicious. To get started, I'm going to be cutting up some bacon. Prior to doing that, I'm going to actually brown our beef. That way I can cook that and set it aside because we're not gonna actually mix that back in until later after the vegetables have cooked and stuff like that. Go ahead and throw your ground beef into the Dutch oven, and then we're gonna take that out and set it aside. Once you've removed your beef, go ahead and throw all of that yummy bacon inside. I like to separate it all up and actually chop it up. That way we're gonna cook it. What I really love about the way I do this recipe is it gets some of that bacon grease into your pasta sauce and it's so yummy. While the bacon's cooking, I'm gonna chop up one yellow onion, um, a couple sticks of celery, and also a couple carrots. I like to cut these up as small as possible. That way they aren't um, too large. Otherwise you'll have a very rustic kind of feel for your pasta sauce versus just kind of allowing the carrots and the celery to influence some of the flavor, but not be the main star of the show. Once you get those chopped up, go ahead and throw them in with the bacon and just mix it up so that delicious bacon fat gets right into those vegetables. Let them simmer until the onions are translucent. I like to add some seasoning to this, which I'm not gonna share with you what that seasoning was because I am working on making a really great recipe for you guys. But add in your favorite seasoning and then I'm gonna be adding back in the beef and a 15 ounce uh, can of crushed tomatoes. Mix that all up and then I also like to add an eight ounce can of tomato paste. I think this adds a really thick, rich flavor to this um, pasta sauce, but it also um, allows some of that rich flavor of the tomato to come through as well, which is very authentic for this dish. Then we're gonna be adding in two bay leaves and a little bit of chicken stock, but my favorite part to this recipe is we're gonna add in a little bit of milk. You could do milk or half and half. The thickness of the tomato paste is thick enough for me, so I like to add milk. I will definitely put this recipe down below so you guys can see the exact measurements I used but this is one of my favorite little tricks to this dish. It just makes the sauce so delicious and creamy. You have to try it. I let that pasta sauce simmer for about two hours and when it's about close to being served, I'm going to get the pasta ready. So while that's boiling, the kids went out to the chicken coop and collected all kinds of eggs. The chickens have been hiding these all over the place, so I wanted to wash them because they had a lot of dirt on them. Um, you typically don't need to wash chicken eggs, but uh, I, I like to. So I'm gonna wash those off and set them aside and then I'm going to drain our pasta and get dinner on the table. You can either mix all of it together or just put a nice bed of pasta and your delicious sauce on top and enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed today's little video on just a simple chill refresh for the month to come. April is going to be lots of fun. We have lots of projects coming up at the house and I would love it if you would stick around and subscribe and I will see you in the next video real soon. Bye! We